Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. This is my first video, so apologies for the shoddy editing and poor quality. You can leave some positive feedback in the comments. I'm going to be doing a Threadripper build over the next couple of weeks. You can probably see the boxes behind me, which contain most of the components. I'm still waiting on a couple of things. I'm still planning out the design of my build, and one of the important things I haven't yet decided on is the fan. For this build, I want a low noise computer. The one I'm using at the moment is awfully loud, and this time I want to build something very quiet. So I'm going for lots of radiators with lots of fans on low RPM, but hopefully very quiet. But I don't want to compromise on performance. So what I'm doing is I'm testing out various fans that I want, or potentially want to use in the build, to see how they perform in both temperature and in noise. The fans I'm testing are a stock hybrid cooler fan, which actually came on a 980Ti hybrid that I'm using for the test. I'll go over the test methodology in a moment. Uh, and I'm doing that for, so we've got a baseline reading. I'm also testing this Corsair SP120. Now these are very generic, everyone seems to have these fans. This is the quiet edition, as I said, I want to go for noise. And the reason I've included this, a, because they look quite good and they would go with my build. B, and more importantly, because everyone includes these fans in their tests. So if you know how this fan performs in my test, you can go and see how the rest of the fans from my test actually compare to other fans from other reviews. So that's the Corsair SP120. The next one is a Parvum F1.0. Now I've been using these in my current build, and actually I've taken this out of there. And I had planned to use this in my new build because I'm also going for a black and white theme, although I'm going to have some green in there as well. It's primarily going to be black and white. So this fan works with the theme, but I'm probably not going to use these because they're actually discoloured. You can see that the fan blades are white and the casing has actually gone cream. It's a nice rubberized finish, but it's going to change colour over time. So I'll probably use these, I'm going to include them in the test anyway, just to see how they actually perform. The next one I, ch I chose for entirely aesthetic reasons. Uh, it's a Shark Tune Shark Blade fan. And it's got this really nice, unique fan, uh, fan blade design, which has actually got ridges in it. They claim this will actually improve performance and noise. But that remains to be seen, because this fan is £8. All the others are significantly more expensive than that. The fan I would like to use in my build is this one here. I got these on Amazon, they're not on the normal uh, PC shopping sites, so who knows how they'll perform, but they look really cool. It's an IGO or IGO, I don't know how you pronounce it, I'm going to say IGO throughout. So it's an IGO uh, C3 RGB fan. Now, RGB to the rage, I haven't got any of the Thermaltake ring fans because they're far too expensive, they seem like a cheaper alternative and we'll see how this performs compared to the rest. If this performs okay, this is the one I want to use in my build, because everyone likes RGB. And finally, for a bit of a laugh really, I've included this AeroCool uh, case fan. That actually came with my case. It is PWM, so I can do the test. I'm going to test this AeroCool case fan. Uh, I don't expect it to perform very well at all, because it's a case fan. Uh, fans that come with cases are notoriously cheap. They are the cheapest ones they can get away with. And it's not a static pressure fan. The test I'm going to be doing is a radiator test. So it'll be interesting to see how that actually performs on the case. Probably one of the cheapest fans you can get. Okay, on to the test methodology. What I've got here is a PC running with a 980Ti and importantly it's got a hybrid cooler and that hybrid cooler is important because I can swap the fan on the radiator and test to see how the fan uh, performs in cooling the GPU down when it's under load. I'm using a old case that I'm actually replacing and one of the good things about this case is it's got this door that swings out that allows you to place radiators and fans inside it and for this test I'm actually going to leave this door hanging open so the air going through the fan 
is coming from the room, not inside the case. So as the case heats up, we're not pumping hotter air through the radiator. So it's just coming from the room. I've also got a temperature sensor uh, in the case, which I'll remove, which is here. So you can see here, I've got a temperature sensor. I'm gonna be using this to measure the ambient temperature inside the room and then compare the delta between the GPU temperature and the ambient temperature after running the heaven benchmark for 10 minutes. For each fan, I'm gonna run uh, three tests, one at the minimum RPM, one at the maximum RPM, which is obviously gonna be different between each fan, and one at 700 RPM. The 700 RPM fan test will be the most interesting because it will give us a like for like comparison. We can see if one fan cools better at 700 RPM than another, and then we can rule out RPM as a deciding factor. A higher RPM fan will obviously cool more than a lower RPM fan, but we should see some variation at 700. The first fan I'm going to be testing is the stock fan, which is an Arctic cooling fan. I'm going to be using that as a baseline number. In theory, it should be quite good because it's obviously designed to go on a radiator. So now I'm going to start the test with this fan. Again, do three tests and see how it performs. Okay, so I've just started the first test running. I've set the GPU fan speed to its minimum, which is 500 RPM. Again, this is the stock fan that came with the GPU. I'm using the BitPhoenix software in order to control well, to the temperature, and that's what I'll be using to change the speed of the other fans. The GPU fan's got a slightly different connector, it's on the GPU, so I'm using the GPU software. And you can see the heaven benchmark is running. Everything is on ultra, it's at 4K. The only thing that I've turned down is the anti-aliasing, and I've put that on 2X. And it's running at about 20 frames a second, which for Linux is about what you'd expect. It's only been running a couple of minutes, and the GPU temperature has gone from 40, which it was idling at, to currently 65. I'm gonna leave this going for 10 minutes, and then take the result, let it cool down, run the test at 700 RPM, then run the same test at uh, the maximum RPM, which I believe is 1400, and then do the same for the rest of the fans. Okay, the results are in, and there's some rather interesting things to note here. My first conclusion is that fans make no difference, and I'll come on to why that is in a second, or why I think that is for this test. As expected, as we ramp up the RPM, cooling performance increases, and overall, fan RPM dictates the cooling performance. There's a few interesting things that I want to point out though. Uh, at 700 RPM, all of the fans were within a couple of degrees difference in delta. And interestingly enough, the cheap case aerocool fan was actually identical at 700 RPM to the more expensive and uh, well-known and well-regarded Corsair fan. Now, there's a couple of reasons I think this may be. Uh, the first one is that at 700 RPM the fan is not running at maximum efficiency. Of course their fan is probably designed to give best performance at higher speeds. Secondly, uh, PWM controllers are potentially inconsistent. Because you tell a fan to run at 700 RPM, the controller then has to decide what that means and give the right amount of power to the fan. 
So there could be some difference between actual RPM and reported RPM in the software I was using, which could help explain it. Also, the radiator was fairly thin. It was a standard all-in-one radiator with a fairly low FPI, just from looking at it. And that could of offset the difference a static pressure fan would have made. It'll be interesting to see how they compare in the noise tests. I've got a chart here showing the fans all running at 700 RPM. This is the delta, so the temperature above ambient that each fan reached after 10 minutes running the benchmark. And you can see they're all pretty much within uh, a couple of degrees of each other. So we can determine from that that there's not really much difference between any of the fans at 700 RPM. So if you're going to run 700 RPM, which is what I intend to do, fan choice doesn't really matter. As we ramp up the uh, speeds, we can see, however, that there are some differences. The stock fan actually performed the, uh, the best, being 34 degrees above ambient. The close second was the Corsair, which was 36. The others didn't quite run at the same speed, so it's a hard thing to judge. One thing I will mention is this IGO fan. Now, the IGO fan does not run at a designated RPM. It's not a PWM fan. It comes with this fan controller that lets you adjust colours and fan speeds. And there's only two settings, high and low. So I've included that in my chart. And I don't think low was as low as 700 RPM. And the reason for that is because the IGO fan, while running on low, maxed out at 77 degrees, whereas the Corsair fan running at 700 RPM reached 81. So this was probably running somewhere in the region of 800 to 900 RPM in that test. Uh, the high RPM, it reached 64, whereas the Corsair reached 63 or 36 degrees above ambient and for the IGO 37. So one degree difference at high RPM. That's not really relevant for me because I'm going to be able to run at low RPM. So overall, the IGO fan actually performed very well. At low RPM, it was the same as the Corsair at 700 RPM. So it'll be interesting to see how this does in the noise test. But for me, the most interesting result is that at low RPM, it didn't really matter which fan I chose. They all gave pretty much the same performance. Does static pressure matter? Possibly. Uh, fan speed clearly matters a lot more, at least for the radiator I was using. Once again, I will say that it's possibly down to the size or thickness of the radiator and the uh, FPI fins per inch rather than the fans. With a different radiator, you might get different values than I got here. But it's still quite an interesting thing to see. Um, we've effectively discovered that for that radiator, static pressure fans make pretty much zero difference, and the only real difference is RPM. In the next video, I'm going to show you uh, a noise test. I'm actually going to be testing each fan through the radiator. And, yeah, we'll be testing each fan through a radiator and measuring the noise using a smartphone app. I'll go through my test methodology in the next video. So hopefully you'll stick around and watch the next one in the series. And from then on, I'm going to be building my Threadripper rig using the chosen fans. At the moment, this is my favourite contender. I'll leave you with a few shots of these fans turned on so you can actually see how cool they are and how good they look.